Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode, we will bring you our favorite founders, CEOs, and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership, and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you, and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more you create more for others. Righty-ho, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. This week's episode is going to be a game changer for you. I'm so excited. I wanted to have a conversation with you around, it's a, a common missing ingredient in alignment and manifesting, and I believe that this is the missing piece for so many people. It's often the part that people don't build in time for or understand so this is really important and it's something that I talk about with my clients a lot so I want to encourage you to build it in so that you can not only have a breakthrough in your revenue growth in your business and the impact that you're making in the world but be able to sustain it so this is the up level bit when we're we're, we're able to make that the breakthrough the new ground floor and it doesn't matter which level you're at in business there's almost always going to be a point where you're transitioning from one identity to the next and and here's the thing you have to let go of the old identities to step into the new so if you think for example you struggle with money as part of your identity you have to let that go and believe that you're financially solvent to become financially solvent if you've been a six-figure earner and now you want to be a seven-figure earner you have to let the identity of the six-figure earner go and to step into and embody the identity of a seven-figure earner And during each step, we can have inner conflict with our past self along with our future self. So as you step into your future self, give yourself permission to enjoy the different identities that you're experiencing. What can start to happen? You may recognize this. This may resonate. Have you ever found yourself contracting back after an up level or making a claim to go for an up level? So you know you want to go in a certain direction and then you feel the resistance bubbling up. So this is the somatic default point kicking in. This kicks in to keep you in alignment with your current identity. So a somatic default point, think of this as neural pathways that act as internal reference points. These are set points that create your glass ceiling. They stop you from increasing your client base, manifesting more money, more joy, more time, all the things. And our brain and nervous system works to maintain these set points, even if they aren't serving us. And so this is where we start to see it show up in terms of business plateaus, our client attraction, our money, our relationships. And what I see in the personal development field is so many buzzwords like up-leveling, embodiment, manifestation, alignment. And of course, along with buzzwords comes myths. And these myths can be really confusing because we, we can actually hold them as beliefs because they've been projected onto us through, you know, whatever we're reading, watching, who we're listening to, and so on. And one of the myths that can trip us along our manifesting journey, our co-creation with the universe, is that you are, when you're manifesting, you're pulling a creation out of thin air. So you've set the intention, you're going to create a 50k month, for example, you're doing the inner alignment work, and then there is a niggle. And it starts to feel out of reach because the mind starts going, how on earth are you going to do that? How much work are you going to have to do that to to create that? And it takes a lot of energy to be consciously feeling like you're forcing yourself to course correct and to tell yourself over and over that you will be doing this. It will work when, of course, if you're coming at it from the energy of you have this undercurrent of it has to work rather than a a breezy embodied I believe in miracles so whilst you're repatterning your brain your conscious mind your subconscious is going um 
hang on a second, excuse me, <laughs> are you really going to do that? And you can start to feel this push-pull going on. So one moment you can feel like you're, you're celebrating, it's going to happen, I can feel it in my body, and then no, it's not going to happen. So there's a big emotional roller coaster, And of course, that's energetically very draining. Does that resonate? Now, whilst you can activate this for a certain amount of time and, and raise your frequency, and as you start to do this, when you're doing the inner work, you will start to notice a difference in your experiences, opportunities coming to you within about three weeks if, you, if you've just started doing the work and you're doing it consistently. Now, without the healing and the transformation and this missing ingredient, essentially your conscious mind and subconscious are having a bit of a tug of war. So where you may be focusing on that, I'm going to manifest 50K this month. I'm going to manifest the 50K next month. I'm going to manifest the 50K next month and looking outwards only and over and over feeling like you're doing that every month. It can feel like, it doesn't feel like you're manifesting and pulling a creation out of thin air. Of course, it, it feels like burnout. And I see this a lot. So what is missing for people is really understanding this key ingredient in their co-creation with the universe. And that is integration. So the missing ingredient is the inner work for creating and integrating a new identity so that it's effortless and it is your new normal. Because when the focus is on the inner realm, the subtle shifts, the longer term transformation through identity work, this is where you integrate. You embody it into your physical being. Your body feels it. And this is where you're able to attract opportunities to you. They're magnetized to you because of who you are, the frequency that you're emitting. Conversely, feeding the myth, it's all out of the thin air. It's not. It's actually, it's from your vibration, being fully integrated and being aligned. So this is why... When I'm working with my clients in the Wealth Portal, we have a specific pathway that I guide them on for their integration and embodiment. So I have weekly bespoke, 15-minute healing method manifesting activations. I guide them to bring the higher self, conscious mind and subconscious mind into alignment with their intention so that all levels of consciousness are working towards their manifesting and alignment. So the subconscious isn't the one leading the show. And we do deep healing of trauma so that it's not showing up in business so that my clients can then serve at their highest level and make a bigger impact with their business. Because when you heal the trauma that's held in the body and allow the emotions to move through you and out, you start to raise your vibrational set point and integrate. And as you let go of the old identity and start to integrate with the new identity, it becomes easier to manifest. There's less effort than when you're in that space of feeling like you're rolling from month to month without having integrated. And I talk about soothing the nervous system a lot because when we step outside our comfort zone, our fight, flight, freeze gets triggered. And of course, that's not helpful for manifesting. What we need to do is to be willing to do the inner work. So when you're willing to do the inner work and to imprint and reprogram yourself and to have your higher self leading the way, your higher self, your conscious mind, your subconscious all moving in the same direction, without being drawn in by what we see in our reality around us. This is absolutely key. This, this creates a, a, a game changer when you're able to be in that space because we don't want the subconscious to be leading the show because it can start to think, I don't want to have to keep, keep doing this to maintain this kind of lifestyle for my for my family if this is so we can start to stop doing things that work if it hasn't fully integrated so to give you an example that will resonate for, for all entrepreneurs I'll, I'll take an example from the coaching industry so if you're a coach and you're only hitting the the big income goals that you have for your company when you're launching rather than having a business model that provides you know, a blend of windfalls and payments stacked out in advance. The conscious mind will then tell you, well, you're gonna to have to keep doing this in order to get that. You can only have this when you do that, whatever that thing is that has originally brought in that, that, that income. You'll have to do a launch to have your big, big income goal. So the focus starts to get skewed. And of course, this isn't true because as your identity grows and you want to grow in alignment with your values and your business evolves, there are different strategies that you use at different points along the way, of course. So what you focus on to hit your first six figures will be different to what you focus on as you fortify and grow to your first multi six figures using the right strategies at the right time. 
And of course, your identity is going to change as you uh, as you're growing as well. Being a CEO of a multi six figure, seven figure business is very different, requires a different identity to that of the identity of the startup entrepreneur, for example. And the magic really is in taking care of your consciousness and changing what is integrated that doesn't serve you anymore. And our identity is projected onto all the time. We have societal programming, transgenerational programming, government programming, media programming, parental programming, cultural programming, all, all going on around us, all imprinting onto our consciousness. So we can hold so many beliefs that aren't even ours. And collectively, the victim and poverty consciousness is vast and we can get hooked into it. So other people's thoughts of not enough money, money will be taken away from us, whatever version of it, you know, it's greedy to want more, there isn't enough to go around. That combined with previous experiences of your own financial trauma and goal trauma, all of this imprinted onto your human Wi-Fi and your body, what you're emitting out to the universe because you're holding this in your in your human Wi-Fi and in your body, you can have a real physical response to your financial situation. Because your consciousness and your bodies have been programmed to be afraid of it. So if you think about the society that you grew up in, what did your subconscious learn? Did it learn you're safe, you're abundant as everyone else? Or, you know, a version of the opposite? So if you're in a space of feeling like your system might short circuit if you allow more money in and it's becoming a pressure having more and more or you're creating you know, 80K months and yet you can't shake the niggle of it's not enough, I'm not safe, then this is bubbling up because your body, your subconscious doesn't feel safe and this then creates a contraction because your subconscious wants to feel safe going back to those default set points. Part of that is familiarity and so you can feel yourself contract back. What's happened is the identity that you're creating hasn't integrated and become embodied. So if we're not feeling safe and secure and feel that an influx of money, whether it's growing to multi six figures, is going to rescue you and to save you and make you feel better, then it can feel really sticky, like pushing treacle up a hill. And it's creating from a space of not being in alignment with the identity of the person that holds this frequency and has this type of experience of being an abundant space and being able to hold this money. So this is why when I focus on helping my clients, what I, how I do it is I help them with their relationship to money and working on their identity, beliefs, thoughts, emotions, behaviors, actions, because that's where the integration happens. So the embodiment happens, you recode your DNA for that up level. Working on your relationship with money and doing the deep inner work around your identity underpins embodied manifesting. So the forgotten missing ingredient here is integration. Integration is part of the recipe. So I want to touch on what integration looks like so you can honor this as part of your process so i always celebrate my clients when they start to flush out the stories as you know whatever's been hiding in the subconscious it's being brought forward to release it's showing where you've been integrated at and of course it can feel really messy at times but you're consciously choosing to change your identity and to bring yourself into alignment which is incredible it's empowering and this is the way to integrate and, and embody the up level and what i've noticed is the subconscious has its favorite patterns it likes to rinse and repeat, which is actually helpful because you can start to become familiar with them. Oh, and it's going to look different for everybody. Oh, you know, there's that old visibility chestnut again. There's that fear of networking. There's that fear of being abandoned or rejected, creating some procrastination. Ah, oh, isn't that interesting? Look at that. So I invite you to see it as a good sign. It's a sign that you're up leveling and the integration is coming if you lean in. So what is your pattern of resistance? that bubbles up before the integration? How does it show up for you? Because you can start to map it out. You can map it out. So, oh, I know I feel this. So I'll feel like an imposter at first. Then I know that I'll hang back in the group. Then I'll start to feel like this as I suss people out. Then I start to take action. Then I start judging myself. Then I realize this. And then I start doing the inner work. And then I move through it. And as I've let that go, then I feel embodied and integrated. Does that make sense? So this is the sweet spot 
as you start flushing it out, you're doing the energy healing around your identity, knowing that you're starting to integrate with the identity of the you who is already living this life from an empowered place, not from a contracted place. So I hope that this has served you some thoughts this week on integrating your new identity so that manifesting can feel effortless. To think of integration as the forgotten missing ingredient it is part of the recipe, along with the inner work that you're doing around your identity. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you've loved what we've been talking about here and would like to have a manifesting boost, then do check out our Breakthrough the Money Ceiling Masterclass. We run them from time to time and our next one will be coming up soon so you can get on the wait list for that. We will pop the links in the show notes for you so you can check it out. And we'd love to stay connected with you. We can stay connected together. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram via my name, Louisa Havers. Look forward to talking to you very soon. Sending you your lots and lots of love. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.